I'm Leo Water for Kit Guru. This is Luke Hill, also from Kit Guru. Computex has just finished, and we're going to have a quick discussion about the things that have caught our attention in the past week. So, AMD, two parts to AMD. Part one, obviously, is Threadripper, and yeah. we've had some small amount of information, and two is Vega, or the absence thereof. So, which was the bigger of the two for you, the processor side of things or the graphics side of things? Well, I'm an optimist, so I'm going to say more news about Threadripper and okay. X399 was good. And um, what, what, what specific news did we have? Um, I think one of the big points, I can't remember if this has been confirmed on the financial day or not, but it's 64 PCIe lanes yep. on the CPU. Yep. So that's pretty big. Yeah, um, we you, know. And is that PCI two or three? Three point oh. So, right. Yeah. So we know uh, currently the highest you can get is forty lanes with the sixty nine fifty X. That's mm -hmm. we've seen that's going to change with Skylake X. So yeah. there's going to be forty four lane models with the i nine chips, but sixty four lanes. Now the way they're doing things, uh, if you allow for storage and such like, does that mean you could have three full fat graphics cards plus extra or four plus extra? Uh, yeah. Well, it would seem depending on the motherboard, of course. Yeah. And we have seen some X three ninety nine motherboards, yeah. but it looks like you could do four by six. If you mm -hmm. wanted to go straight graphics cards, um, and back not, in the real world, yeah, back in the real world, you could do two by sixteen graphics yeah. cards plus a bunch of PCIe storage yeah. plus like ten gigabit networking. Um, a lot of the connectivity because it's through the CPU. I think we're going to see a lot of storage and a lot of the expansion cards running directly from the CPU yeah. rather than the Intel approach, which. As of now, the M.2 PCIe and perhaps the U.2 ports generally tend to run through the chipset. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously that's something we've seen Intel change actually with the upcoming platform. So it looks like AMD is also going for the through CPU approach. Uh, we saw this with Ryzen actually. Where there was yes, an M.2 yes, PCIe looking connection. very promising. Yes. And yeah. on, on the 64 lanes, did we see 64 lanes on the side or did we see up to 64 lanes? Because I do not recall an up. Yes, this was an interesting mm. point because we don't know if it will scale with core count like like uh, obviously X299, mm. the X299 chips will. However, I don't think there was an up to. So I, and, I and didn't I, see I've it, no. seen no. some no. articles, some mm. news pieces saying that no, that's a full 64 mm. lanes for all of the chips. And this seems to be kind of the way that AMD is going with Ryzen, where they'll give you everything with respect to the chips well, and then they'll uh, just whoa, take whoa, small whoa, bits of Rewind. Out. They'll sell you everything. I mean, in fairness. Sorry, give they, is an incorrect Obviously, prices, there, yeah. prices are thread rip at the moment, completely unknown. But if Who you, knows? But, but, it, but if you look at the Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, the processors are sensible money, but not mm -hmm. free of charge. And the motherboards oh, no, are of course not. sensible money, but not free of yeah. charge. And you have to assume, now it's X299 for Intel, it's X399 for AMD. This, this so has we are to be chip deliberate. Over. Yes, absolutely. This has to be deliberate. I mean, it's, tro it's trolling Intel. It, it looks that way. It looks no, like AMD's no, got no. a sense of humor no. and it, he, he's been, It's trolling Intel. It just is. There's no two ways <laughs> about this. I mean, it's funny. We like it. But when Intel comes to the next what's it and they go oh, what are they uh, yeah. well let's put them in an awkward situation but i mean intel's yeah. got market share so you can see the business move i think from an enthusiast from a consumer point of view it's quite funny yeah um however or in all seriousness it's really confusing and that's when not you say x299 and you have to actually say amd or intel to make sure you know what the hell you're talking about it's oh and i am also frankly personally baffled that uh, AMD's done Ryzen 5 or, and Ryzen 3 is coming, Ryzen 3, 5, 7, and yet uh, this is Threadripper. I fully assumed it would be Ryzen 9 Threadripper or Threadripper Ryzen 9, just to completely make it all run yeah. in parallel. And yet at the moment, they're just saying Threadripper and then a number like a telephone number, yeah, which is just garbage. So a bunch of numbers. But, yeah, uh, I think yeah, Ryzen no. 9 would have been good, but it mm. could be worse. could be epic with mm. a Y. Yeah, for the, very, for the data very center. Good. Yes, 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 very good. Not very good. No. So and, we, and we've seen X399 boards, and they look promising mm. because we With still a socket, think... yay large. Wow, uh, that in... socket, yes. Yeah, huge. To clarify, by the by, the Gigamite that I did in some news coverage at the 101 when I did components and such, like I believe on our Kit Guru news, we actually said the socket was covered to protect something. It wasn't, it's because they didn't have the correct Torx key to undo the three yeah. screws to remove the cover. They would have shown it. The one that Luke saw from, I think, Azus. Yeah, so, so we, the we, we've we seen bolts more. Yeah, I mean from the, the all pins were just mangled. Yeah, but that's uh, the trade show for but, you. But we've yeah we've seen boards from yeah. all of the obviously the yeah. main four vendors: MSI, ASUS, ASRock, and Gigabyte. And it looks promising. It looks yeah. like they put a lot of focus and a lot of effort into the boards, and that's usually a good sign. Mm. Because if a platform is not promising, if a CPU is not promising, those motherboard vendors they won't spend yeah. their time, their resources investing yeah. in high performance motherboards. They might spend time and resources investing in lower performance yeah. and lower end motherboards. Boards, but no. So we've seen ASUS, they'll be launching their Zenith motherboard with a 10 gigabit 
networking capability. Nah. And you think, right, late, 10 gigabit late, networking. The, the latest like, hobby horse from yes, gigabit, yes. not enough, two and a half, five, not enough, he wants 10 gigabit. Ten, it's let's go absolute 10 ev. all the way. But you think when you see points like that, you think, okay, this could be mm. promising. So you've got three M.2 slots on some of the boards, mm. you've got strong power delivery solutions because you'll need it with mm. the TDPs yeah, that these yeah. CPUs are going to run well, at. at. Which at the moment is that they're, they're working at 180 watts is what the model Yeah, I think we've seen and a few numbers. It looks like 145, 165, and 180. But the motherboard vendors fully believe that will go higher, yeah, obviously uh, with overclocking. Uh, and the motherboard manufacturers are saying to me, because we were roaming around separately, were saying, and if it goes over 180 watts, that could be a struggle. We really hope they keep it less than 180 watts. Yeah, out of the box, I think 180 watts is enough. Yeah, um, yeah. The socket is just so large, especially mm. with four dim banks either size, that there's mm. just not much room for a strong power delivery solution. So we're seeing a lot of the board vendors going for eight phase solutions mm. because you simply can't fit much more than that above the socket. Mm. And then they're branching their cooler out because they know this yeah. is going to be tough. And the, the same from the cooler manufacturers. We've well, seen yes, Noctua bring out yes. uh, SP3. Is that the latest name? Was it TP3? It's the, the, TR4 they changed and yeah, yeah, yeah. SP3. I think the, the thread, socket, thread ripper, thread, yeah. the big thread ripper socket. Yeah. We've seen them bring out optimized coolers for yeah. the massive heat spreader. Yeah. And the, the manufacturer saying to me, had we but had our ducks in a row beforehand, we'd have made for X299, we'd have made the thing bigger, and then it would have been appropriate to both AMD, and then it would have slightly overshadowed the Intel socket, but it would have done the whole lot. Now it is of actually, whatever they've done for X299, they're gonna need to make slightly larger for Threadripper. Yeah, I, th I think they're gonna be put in quite a difficult situation actually, because they need to be careful that their cooler, if if it's a Threadripper sized heat spreader mm. on, the, on the base of the cooler, that will not fit on some no, mainstream no. platforms. So you'll find, generally because of the design with AM4 mm. because obviously the, the chip sits quite high above yep. the motherboard but with the socket reten with the retention sockets for Intel um, so for the LGA 2011 V3 mm. uh, 2066 which is the same dimensions more or less mm. as 2011 and for 1150 uh, or 115X that could very well cause interference to the yeah. point where you actually see a segregation so high-end desktop coolers and mainstream or yeah, all-encompassing coolers in terms of size, they are radically different. Massive. Uh, well, I, however, I would say that if you took a, an X99, X299, X399, so old Intel, new Intel, and new AMD, and put your hand across the top half of the board over the socket, I think you'd struggle to identify which is which at the moment because there's an awful lot of similarity. Yes, there. yes. And I think that is actually a good thing for AMD mm, because oh, it shows yeah. that they're getting good support from mm. the motherboard vendors and they believe in this platform. And I think if that's a good thing for AMD, that's a good thing for consumers. Consumers. Totally we agree. need competition. On the point of the socket, yeah, it's about the size. It, it makes of a sense. house. It, it, <laughs> of a house, a small house. <laughs> okay. for the it, it, it's, it's yay sized. It, it is that large. It doesn't make a Samsung Galaxy S7 look too uh. big. It is large. It is very large. Uh. But uh, quite frankly, who cares? If it gives the performance, oh, no, not who fussy. cares? No, no. Yeah. Right, Threadripper done. Okay, but AMD, Vega. So Where is Vega? A, a, well, AMD technically launched Vega by announcing Vega Frontier, the professional yes. card in whatever shade of blue it is they've discussed for the heat Ah, the specific blue. Thing. I don't remember the chemical yeah, is, formula. Or, or care. We, we, don't, we don't care. <laughs> The I'm, blue. I'm sure prosumer buyers will. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I mean, if they're going to give me one, but they're not, so whatever. Um, it's a blue. But Vega, for us, were. And the thing is, it's not just that we want Vega, the graphics card, so we can move on from RX 480, 580. It's also yeah. that until we have Vega graphics, we don't get Vega APU. And until we have Vega APU, we don't get Vega mob uh, Ryzen Mobile. Ryzen Mobile, mm -hmm. you see the words. Um, so it's not just that we want the thing, we want the thing, but it's also part of the next thing and the next thing. And this all has to come in the next six months. Yes, well, we, we saw that AMD has finally, uh, I'm gonna say finally, I think it's deserved it in this case. They finally announced a launch date for Vega Consumer Edition. Yep. So we know the Frontier Edition is coming this month, yeah. uh, towards the end of June, I think for not, two, three weeks. Not that we care. Um, we don't care. No, no, yeah, no we, okay. we don't care. I, no, we couldn't care. Our no. audience probably doesn't no. care. Some people no. in industry might oh, yeah, care, yeah. but Other great people. for them. Not Fantastic. Us. Not us. The consumer edition is launching at the end of July, so the turn of July and August at SIGGRAPH 2017 yep. in Los Angeles. So yep. it looks like a 30th of July launch. However, 
However, we've only been told that's mm. a launch. So whether yeah. that's a paper launch and mm. here are the reviews, here's the card, you can buy it in mm. two weeks, three weeks, two months, we haven't got stock. Or whether this is, yep, here you go, here's the card, go to Overclockers UK, go to Newegg, go buy one. Yeah. But if I adopt your optimistic tone for a moment, what is the longest you've ever known between a paper launch and a real launch? Oh, wow, that's a tough question. It's... Ish. It would tend to be... I think it would be really cheeky if it was in the order of one to two months. Oh, yeah. I think a, I'm a, a couple of weeks, four, a few yeah, weeks. Couple, a couple of weeks is not unusual. Four weeks is pushing it. Over four weeks is like, oh, yeah, there's a problem. Yeah, over four weeks is cheeky. So yeah. if you add a month to SIGGRAPH, you get when? Well, that would be the end of August. Right, so, so basically, if it hasn't happened by the end of August, it's a problem. If it's by the end of August, kind of, yeah, all right. Yeah, well... Because that's another quarter onto the... For, that's Q3 rather than the Q2 that we wanted. So mm -hmm. not happy, but it might turn around rapidly. Yeah. And if it's good, then we can forgive. Yeah, if it's patience not good, will be uh, uh, paid uh, off. Uh, if it's not good, then... If it's not good, uh, yeah. Yeah, my, well, my current... My current um, speculation is that the full fat Vega for desktop graphics should be equivalent to GTX 1080 or a fraction more, but probably not 1080 Ti. That's my guesstimate. I, I think it's going to be an interest. I think it's going to, it's tough to match the 1080 Ti in that GPU. They are fast cards. Mm. Um, I think the 1080 uh, or slightly above 1080 performance would be a good target if the price is correct. I think HBM2 memory is going to be a bit of a wild card. We'll see that yep. do well at some high resolution, some tiles because it's got such significant mm. bandwidth. Um, it just would have been nice to get a bit more information from AMD about bigger uh, a price, um, yeah, a look uh, at the cooler. Uh, just yeah. a, a, anything, a, a anything. Tad more but of course, the other thing about HBM2 when that comes with Vega, of course, that will give us an insight into what NVIDIA Volta is going to do. So that is also is a, it's a double. We want Vega. We want Vega to be good, but it will also give us an idea about what's coming next from NVIDIA. So that's a, a triple, quadruple thing. Whammy, not whammy. One well, of them. Multiple hope. Multiple. It's a quadruple hope. Yeah, I'm 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 staying optimistic for Vega. Yeah. I think we've got a date, so right. good, we've got something to go by. Let's hope the performance is there. Okay, AMD done. I'm Leo Walder for Kit Guru. Luke Hill, Kit Guru. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe.